So okay. do, are you drawn to like, do you like the horror genre? I, I not, not at all. No, <laughs> no not at all. Not at all. It is, I, this is something that I, you know, I don't, I, I don't enjoy watching that. You know, I, I watched some great phenomenal horror films. Um, it all began with The Exorcist when I was very little. But I don't like to be scared. You know, I don't like to pay to be scared. That's why I don't like, you know, crazy rides and uh, go to oh, you know, roller coasters right. and things like that. It's like, why? Yeah, right. Why? Someone explain to me why should I suffer? <laughs> All right, welcome to the SAG After Foundation's Conversations at Home program. I'm Damian Holbrook from TV Guide Magazine. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce the star of Let the Right Went In, Damian Bashir. Damian! Hello. Damian meets Damian. <laughs> <laughs> how so, are you? Yeah, but how do, how, do you spell your, uh, how do you spell your name? I am D-A-M-I-A-N. Oh, so, that's, yeah. that's, the most, that's the most common uh, way in Mexico, but uh, yeah. The because... least common way in America. <laughs> Not exactly because uh, you usually go for D A no D A M I E N. E -N. Yep. Right. Yeah. 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 But and, uh, and you're yeah. D E M. D E M I A N. Yeah. Yes. It's it's all oh. Herman Hesse's fault. Exactly. Everyone asks me like, "Are you named after the book?" I'm like, "No, I'm actually after like uh, yeah. priest who wrote the peppers," uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is also not bad. Um, yeah, no, so no, not that bad. Congratulations. I, I did your panel at New York Comic Con where we screened the first episode, introduced the, the crowd to the show. This show is so good. And I was I loved the first episode and I was so in. But like as we've gotten deeper into this show, oh my God. This this has to be a labor of love. It it is. Isn't isn't it always a labor of yeah. love? You know, whatever we do as actors and uh, you know, producers, directors and uh the arts in general, it, it is a labor of work, right? Because most of the time, we don't even know nor care of how much money the film will make, how many people will see the material. I mean, we want our, you know, our projects to be seen by as many people as possible, but we, we, we can only control so much, you know, and the probably, maybe, sometimes between action and cut. And that's pretty much it, you know? And this is, um, there's so much to talk about here. I would just want to, before we get into that, we'll, you know, obviously give the SAG people some stuff. Your mom was an actress and your dad was a director? They're both actors, yes. Oh. Yeah, and and I, I'm, I'm very happy to say that they are because uh, they're still, you know, rocking and rolling. Uh, wow. Yeah, my father, he's also, he's a theater director. Uh, and a, a, a beautiful actor, uh, and, and my mom is also, you know, she 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 began acting very early in her uh, uh, age, and um, they met each other studying theater in their hometown in Coahuila, Mexico. And then my brothers and I were born in Mexico City. And so this was literally like in your DNA to be a, it was, a performer. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah, because both my my brothers are phenomenal yeah. actors, and. Uh, we let's let's put it this way we spoke the same language at home mm. and we didn't have to convince our families like many other you know fellow peers who have that that's probably sometimes the the first obstacle you know quote unquote uh, to convince your family that you want to you want to you know uh, be an actor you want a life in the arts that's always difficult you know when you say i want to be a poet i want to be a musician i want to be an actor I wanna, they said like <laughs> Oh, you think like, you want to start to death? No, exactly. No, no. It's like saying I want to be a pauper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, 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 no. And uh, and I think it's a beautiful thing. You know, my heart goes out to every single actor in the planet. I, it it always moves me whenever I see a play, whether it's a small little play like an amateur play or a professional play, a West End, you know, a Broadway or Mexico City, anything at all. I just feel you know so moved. Right. by the fact that you know we want to do this for a living and uh and there are millions of actors all over the place you know all over the planet in search of a space to do what we love you know we don't we don't really you see you rarely think about oh i i, I want to be extra famous and uh 
I want to be a millionaire. I want uh, 17 Oscars and uh, 1400 Grammys and stuff and all that. It's, 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 you only think about, give me a space to do what I love. Right, right. And do you remember your first, like the first role where you're like, oh yeah, this is exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, it's funny that you say that because yes, I know exactly when that happened. I mean, when that happened. Uh, and it was only because I, I grew up doing, my brothers and I grew up doing professional theater back in Mexico. Um, and at the same time, I wanted to be a footballer. Um, I was a big, you know, of course, soccer fan, like many Mexicans. We, we, we learned how to kick the ball before, you know, talking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I, I was, you know, determined to become a professional footballer. And uh, at the same time, I was doing professional theater, but it was until I, w I turned 17 hmm. that I did my first lead on a play. And, and I, you know, I always wanted to have that experience because I had lived that experience indirectly through other actors in the National Theater Company in Mexico. Actors that I, that I saw, you know, when we, when, when we did Richard III, um, I would see on the uh, uh, call sheets, you know, for rehearsals, Richard III was always there, you know, Richard right. III, Richard III, Richard III, and then a bunch of us, you know, and you had to find your, your days of rehearsal. So I was the Prince of Wales then, and I was like, oh, okay, I rehearse on Monday, and then again, and all the way to Friday. Shit, man, I, <laughs> I want to I be in action, you know? Right. And then the next, the next play I did was All Wilderness, uh, by uh, Eugene O'Neill yeah. and uh, it's you know it's funny because we know we pretty much are familiar with O'Neill's work and it's very heavy and very dramatic and very hard because it represented most of his uh, own personal story and his own personal life and this is the only comedy that he wrote um, and it's based on what he would have loved to be, you know, to 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 make us his, out of his life, and uh, so I turned the the age of the character on the opening night, uh, seventeen exactly, and it was uh, uh, it was when I when I realized that I wanted to do that for good, you know, forever and ever. Right, that is amazing. And so, and then you came to America. Um, a, a little bit after, and, and I have to say, that play was uh, a co-production with uh, the National Theatre Company, you know, the, the Fine Arts Institute in Mexico, yeah. and the cultural um, uh, office, uh, the Ministry of Culture of the, of the U.S. Embassy in Mexico. So oh, wow. it was a, a co-production because it was the centennial of uh, O'Neill's. Um, uh, birthday and uh, so it was a, a, a co-production and they brought from Broadway they invited Jose Quintero Jose Quintero was a Panamanian director who moved to to the United States when he was 16 uh, wow. determined to have a life in the theater and and he formed a, a company back then and uh, out of that company came, you know, names like Geraldine Page and uh, Jason Roberts and uh, many, many great phenomenal actors. And then he staged uh, the first play that he directed, the first O'Neill play that he directed. Uh, O'Neill's widow saw the play and she came after him and said, here you have, you know, my husband's plays. You are the only one who understands exactly what he meant. And you are the only one who has permission to direct his plays. And, uh, oh. and just like that, he became an expert on Neil's plays. And so he came to Mexico City to direct Our Wilderness. And, um, and that's when we began talking, you know, in our, on our breaks during the rehearsal time. You know, so where do you live? I live in New York and da, 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 da. And I, I was like, yeah, you know, I always feel like... I feel like I want to go out, you know, I just want to, you know, explore the world and uh, give my actor a different type of, uh, different types of um, life experiences and this and that. And he said, yeah, you should come to New York, you know, if you love theater, that's the place. Yeah. So I, that's when I went to New York the first time, that same year, 
And that's the, my, after being in New York for the first time in my life when I was yeah. 17, I went like, this is where I want to be, right. you know? <laughs> yeah. This, Pack my this, bags. This is, yeah. yeah. And then it took, it took me about five years until I actually moved to New York. Okay. All right. And when did you get your SAG card? When I, I got my SAG card after, you know, that year that I lived in New York was, was one of the heaviest, most difficult years of my life. That was the, the first year that I stopped acting for the first time I was doing sometimes you know three plays a year three three plays a year you know different types of uh, you know plays um, uh, from universal authors playwrights and, uh, and 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 so it was it was very very tough for me to uh, just stop acting for the first time and, and get get what they what people call real jobs okay. right <laughs> So, uh, and then, uh, out of all the places in the in the planet, I never made a guacamole in my house, and I ended up making guacamoles in New York. Uh, that was my first uh, real job after being a bartender and um, uh, and a busboy in a in a club. Um, it was it was called the Underground. And then after that, I, 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 I began working at the Rosa Mexicano, a phenomenal Mexican restaurant in New York. And that's when I learned to make guacamoles. So after that year, I moved back to Mexico to save some more money to, uh, I worked on another TV show and uh, made some, uh, saved some more money. And then I moved to Los Angeles. Wow. And that's when I got my first, you know, my SAC card. I, I think it was, it was, um, it was a commercial where I was playing guitar. And basically the audition was, you know, a, a, a guy playing guitar. So it was for Levi. And, uh, and I remember, cause, cause I like to, you know, write and uh, I, 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 I bring my guitar anywhere I go. And uh, so I, I had this song that I had composed to, uh, you know, to a girlfriend, an ex-girlfriend, and I turned it into a Levi song. And uh, so that was my audition and they were crazy about it. They were like, oh yeah, bring the Levi guy. You know, the, the, the guy who, who... and then, you know, yeah. So that, I think that was my, my first uh, Taff Harley type of uh, job for my side car. That is incredible. And that started it all with, with all the work that you've gotten here. I'm still, I will say, I still resent ABC for canceling Grand Hotel. I, I'm <laughs> like, that was a show yeah. that was just like maybe one season ahead of its time because i think totally. I, like a year later and you worked totally. with one of my favorites rosalind uh, i mean rosalind sanchez, sanchez the just beautiful and phenomenal unbelievable. Rosaline. Yes. you know this is funny because i was i was just talking to rosalind and eric yesterday on her on their uh podcast and uh and we were talking about that we pushed very very you know intensely uh, to take the show somewhere else, uh, you know, well, and, and even ABC agreed that, you know, if we wanted to find a, a new home, we could, and then no one wanted it. And, uh, and it's a pity because, you know, um, it I, was I, so I, good. I, 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 yeah, I agree with you. You know, I, I love that show. Yeah. It has so, so much. Yeah. It has so much. And, and I tell you one thing, one of the biggest uh, um, virtues that the African-American artists uh, have is that they support each other deeply mm -hmm. and fully. And when Black Panther came out, they made sure that everybody should go and see that film. Right. right. And even, you know, more actors, you know, uh, not Black actors, but uh, all kinds of actors, we were all pushing to, for everyone to go and see that material right. because the message is very clear. If you don't see that, if we don't go and see that, if we don't tune in into a show uh, like Grand Hotel where the protagonists are Mexican, you know, or uh, Latin, then no one will make another show right. like that and no one will care. So that's exactly why, you know, Black, Black Panther was a great success also because it's a great movie. And, uh, and there is a sequel now, right? And there will be 13,000 more. Oh, definitely. And only because they support each other. But we are a little bit reluctant to step out of our own bubble, step out of our own capsule, and then, you know, just go, go, go on and uh, go ahead and uh, support each other. You know, we, we, we lack of that. 
I feel like it's getting there. It's getting there. And you know, like very slowly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm still like I, I a reboot I would I would be okay with. But you're busy with let the right one in. <laughs> um, I'm very busy with let the right one in, and I tell you something else. I think it's brave that Showtime and Andrew Hinderacker decided that the, 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 the lead characters should be Mexican. Right. I think that's that's that 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 says so much in this time and place, you know, where you know, there are crazy clowns calling us murderers and rapists right, right, and uh, right. things like that, you know. Uh, and to like, and to make it just so organic to hit, like, it's not like they just make a reference. I think it was like the fifth episode where we hear, oh, Mark was born and grew up in Mexico City. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, totally. And, yeah. and but but yes, it, 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 it doesn't have to be like right in your face or in your right. nose, you know. Right. It's, it's because it doesn't matter where the characters are from. Right. And we've seen that so many times, you know, I remember when I, when I did uh, Alien Covenant with Ridley Scott, right. that was one of the first things he told me, you know, I love your accent, I love the way you talk, and we don't have to explain anything. That's exactly. it, and then this is it. Right. And, uh, and it was that, you know, yeah. no, one, no one really cares, it's about something else. And that's, that's what I love about Let the Right One In, that we talk about many other things, you know, the, we go beyond the genre. genre. This right. is not a, only a vampire story. No, no. And that's it. So one of the questions, because you've done, like, you've done Alien Covenant. You've done, like, King Godzilla versus Kong. Um, you know, The Grudge, The Nun, which still messes me up. Um, do you like <laughs> horror? Do you like the genre? <laughs> it still messes you up. <laughs> it does. That nun is not right. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I can't blame you, man. Yeah. Um, so okay, do, are I, you drawn to, like, do you like the horror genre? I, I, not, not at all. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. It is, I, this is something that I, you know, I don't, I, I don't enjoy watching that. You know, I, I watched some great phenomenal horror films. Um, it all began with The Exorcist when I was very little. And um, I think it's a phenomenal genre that is when, when it's well treated, you know, it's, it's, it's just beautiful. And uh, but I don't like to be scared. You know, I don't like to pay to be scared. That's why I don't like, you know, crazy rides and uh, go to you know, roller Same, coasters right. and things like that. It's like, why? Yeah, right. Why? Someone explain to me why should I suffer? <laughs> but anyway, um, so. But this but is I, this I is an to... elevated this is elevated horror in the fact like you took like you're in the vampire story, but it's not a horror tale. The no, horror, the horror stuff is going on with, with Claire and the, the medical laboratory. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. I, and and that's, that's exactly why I love the pilot when I read it. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, as I said before, this goes beyond the genre. Uh, uh, this, this is about many other things. You know, this, this is, of course, a vampire story, but it's, it's, it's a story of the love of a father for his kid and uh, everything that we are always willing to do in order to keep our family safe and productive and uh, healthy and alive. And, uh, and of course, you know, it talks about addiction. If you, mm -hmm. you know, look closely, that is this. Yeah. This is what the, the, the show is about. And there's so much going on as we speak, you know, with the opioid and the epidemic and this and that. When an addiction enters a family in this case you know once my daughter was bitten right. by this creature everything goes upside down and the whole everything family is affected it's a family and the disease. whole family gets affected and the whole society gets affected too so there's a there's a many analogies and there there are many many very clear uh metaphors that have to do with how we human beings behave and in the, the next episode that hasn't aired yet, but I've seen it, we, we actually find out what happened to Ellie. And there's so much in this episode. That's just one hour where we see what happened to Ellie, how it almost instantly destroys his relationship with Zeke and tears the family apart, literally. Um, it's heartbreaking because what we've watched for six episodes is Mark as the man that we see in that episode who when he became that man you know yeah. this crucible um how was it for you filming that episode so far into production because we spent uh, six hours seeing who he is and to then go back to who he was you know just to listen to your exposition here it, it takes me back all the way to three uh moments the first time I read the episode, 
which, by the way, was one of the first episodes that Andrew wrote uh, way before we began shooting the series. Okay. Uh, and then he, of course, you know, it was it was a, a first, you know, outline and a, a, a first draft, and then he continued to finesse it, and uh, and it was very, you know, hard. It was it was so moving, yeah. and that happens to me when I read a good material. You know, I just get lost in it, and uh, and then when we shot it, that was that whole, you know, those whole seven ten days. Hmm. Uh, were very very intense you know it was a very intense shooting all over all um, uh, overall because uh, it was like five six months of very intensely um, demanding uh, every day you know like every hour uh, emotionally physically and mentally and when we saw that I, I can say that you can only achieve that if everyone is connected on the same page, if everyone is, you know, linked to the same emotion. And I, it was very, it was something to, to see my whole crew and of course the, you know, the, the, the whole cast and the, my, my, my producers and directors to be engaged into what the characters were, are, were going through. And, uh, and then to watch it. You see yeah. those three moments, when I read it, when I did it and when I watched it, it was like a charge with so much emotion that, uh, you know, we're so proud of, uh, of their result because we made a promise on episode one. And then that promise uh, mm -hmm. began growing up all the way to episode seven. If you stay with us and if we capture your attention and if we are lucky to have your attention, then Give us some time to tell you what happened. Right. And then, okay. and then we, we, we revealed that on episode seven. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, it takes off like a, like a skyrocket, you know? And there's, I mean, there, it's a beautiful testimony to your work with Madison as well, who's extraordinary. That young girl, oh my God. Um, but the fact that even by the seventh episode, like we know Mark has killed people for this. But the relationship you guys have created on screen, you absolutely forget, or not forget, almost maybe even forgive, in the same way he's seeking absolution from the priest, you forgive him killing people because it's for this child that we love so much by now. Um, so it's, it's very interesting because on paper, this man is a mass murderer, you know, but it's, it's such a tricky place to be um, because, it's almost like we're rooting for this person to keep this child alive, but at the expense of all these other people. It's really, it's incredible. I, 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 I just love to hear that, you know, and I hope, you know, Andrew listened to this, uh, listens to this too, uh, because that is exactly what we've been getting from everybody. And that was the biggest challenge to make this character, you know, empathetic. Right. And uh, empathetic, yeah. Uh, to make this character lovable, yeah. to make this character, to make everyone understand his reasons and his motives. And, uh, and I think we have achieved that because of the same reason that you just said, you know, because of the relationship that we created, you know, the, the bond of a father and daughter mm -hmm. that is very, very strong. And everybody, everybody understands that we, yes, we are willing to cross even the darkest line if it's, you know, to save our, ki our kids. It's, it's been a masterful performance from all of you. And Nika, like the way it's all so well calibrated because we want everyone yeah. to stay safe, right? Even, even over at the, the, the lab, as Claire kind of descends into the darkness of her own father, you know, we start to worry about how everyone is gonna get out of this alive, which I don't know if everybody does. Um, but when do you start to work with, do you get to start working with Nick Stahl and, and, you know, the Claire storyline and any of those other than kind of like scoping out their house? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, you know, I'm glad you mentioned Anika and, uh, and of course, uh, Grace who plays Claire, um, uh, and everybody else, you know, Maddie, and uh, Ian and uh, and Karen and, uh, Jacob, and Jacob, yeah. 
everybody. This cast is incredible. It is. It is one of the best casts that I've ever had the honor to play along. It's. It's. It's just you know I love I love sports right, and I'm only as good. I love playing tennis too. So I'm only as good uh, as my opponent hmm. on the tennis court and on the stage, whether it's theater, film, or TV. I'm. I'm. I can be a great actor if I have a phenomenal cast with me, if I have a phenomenal scene partner with me. But this cast goes beyond that. They, they not only incredibly talented, but uh, they are very generous and uh, they make sure that you are safe. You know, they, they, we, we hold each other's uh, backs and uh, we take care of each other and we take care of our children. You know, the other day, Anika was uh, saying that, that she was very concerned personally about the safety of our kids, not only physical um, uh, and, and, and uh, emotional, but you know, psycholo psychological. Um, and, uh, and we have created a, a very, very tight family, a very, very loving family. And it's a joy every time they say action that I'm you know, with any of these actors to, to be able to perform and uh, to play along, you know, to play this serious game. It's, it's just a, a, a joy. And, you, I, I was hoping, I was, I was uh, begging for more scenes with Grace, for example, right? And that's that's coming up, that's okay. coming up, coming up, and uh, I'm I'm happy to say that, you know, and um, uh, because it's been you know phenomenal that relationship that we have, for example, with uh, Naomi, you know, Anika and yes. Ian, our neighbors, and then my my best friend Kevin, and uh, that's always a joy, you know, it's just really, really phenomenal when we, every, every time we get to play together. But then we extended that, we exited, you know, our building and enter a new territory with these phenomenal actors. And, uh, and, uh, and we, I remember Grace and I were talking about it when we shot our scenes. It was like, uh, please, let's, let's get more of this, you know, hopefully we will get more of this in the next 17 seasons. Yeah. <laughs> right, because you're dealing with immortals. Uh, and I like that we're getting to the point to explain, because Andrew said at New York Comic Con, it will be explained how Ellie possibly ages a little bit. And I love how they figured this out. Um, do you yeah. guys, do you and Anika find that there's like actually a, another, like a level of lightness on set when you're filming with Ian and Maddie? Because the, those scenes, like the birthday scene, and like, they're just they're just so, it's almost like that moment where we all get to take a deep breath in and relax a little bit. Absolutely. And you can only imagine what a treat it was for me to be sitting there. You know, I had the best seat on the house. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Are you yeah. kidding me? First, first row. Yeah. yeah. First row right there. It was so beautiful when, when Anika sang that song. I mean, it was so moving. And of course, Maddie, every time she does that, she's multi, multi-talented. Uh, you know, they are multi-talented. We are multi-talented. We are, yes. Oh, yeah. And, and with all of your awards and nominations, have you talked to Maddie about how she's going to navigate those? Because I feel like they're in her future. I yeah. just feel like this girl is just aimed for stardom. Oh, no, totally. You, you will see. You know, this is only the beginning for Ian and, and, and Maddie. They will be, you know, international superstars. You know, that's, 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 a, it's a no-brainer. That's, yeah. that's, it's, it's, it's happening and it will be clearer every, you know, as, as years pass by. Um, I, it, to, to, to go back a little bit and answer that uh, other question is that, yes, you know, we, wanted to make sure that it was the proper environment for the kids, uh, especially because we're telling a very dark story. Uh, we wanted to make sure that they had a good time, that they didn't bring, you know, the story home, that they didn't, that they didn't take this to, to her dreams, I mean, to their dreams, you know. Um, and, but it happened naturally. It happened naturally. We didn't really uh, suggest any dynamic that it would be lighter, you know, they brought the lightness, uh, you know, to set. And uh, we just had a lot of fun. We always have a lot of fun. We laugh a lot, we sing, and uh, we just, you know, take it easy and joke about it. And um, and that's pretty much how we approach this type of works, you know. I, I think uh, these, these uh, two creatures will, you know, you will hear more 
of them, you know, these three creatures, no pun intended. But, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, they will be around for, for yeah, quite a while. I look forward to it. And now I have to wrap you, but last question. So you worked in restaurants, you, you worked your way up through the New York you know, food chain of, um, and now you're back <laughs> working in a, a set for the restaurant. Um, are you using your own skills? Yeah, well, little did I know that I will use my own experiences, right? right. Um, and and it, it was all part of the experience that I wanted to live, you know, uh, uh, that I wanted to get when I, when I, I wanted to be a taxi driver, you know, only because I was in love with, with, with Robert De Niro's work. And I, I thought, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. But then I got there almost 40 years ago, the last amnesty that was implemented by a Republican party, nonetheless, yes, for undocumented workers. And it's urgent to get a new one, right? Uh, so I couldn't, I couldn't work because I didn't have the proper documentation. I am the result of the last amnesty. So um, I, I, it is time to, you know, in, in order to show our gratitude to millions of undocumented workers to give them name and a face and all that. So um, I didn't know that I was gonna use my skills in the restaurant because I, I learned pretty much everything. You know, not only setting up tables and uh, bringing coffee and desserts and uh, making guacamole at the table and uh, all that, but behind, you know, the backstage type right. of life in a restaurant, everything that goes around in the back. So all that helped. And I love cooking too. Oh, nice. Uh, nice. I'm, I'm not a great chef as Mark is, but uh, but I'm I'm a pretty pretty decent cook and uh, and and all that helps you know I'm I'm always open to learning more about everything because I'm sure my actor will use it one day. Right, I love that. I love that, and that's I think that's so great for like the SAG after people to hear. Also, like life experiences, regardless of what you're going through, can always end up helping you on screen. I love yes, that. Sir. Well, listen, yes. thank you so much, everyone. You, get into the show this show is so good and we're getting close to the, the finale and episode seven on um so thank you thank you so much sir um on behalf of the sag after foundation i want to thank you for sharing your experiences process and craft with your fellow performers so thank you so thank much. you damien thank you so much and Have thank you everybody day. and just a, can i say one last thing to all my fellow peers out there uh especially to the ones that are still looking for a place to do what we love stay there stay there stay there stay there this is one of the toughest professions ever you have chosen one of the toughest and one of the most beautiful careers in the planet and if you stay there and are true to your art it will happen there's no way it won't nice excellent thank you so much thank you guys